Good morning, everyone. Let's say the pledge together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. we continue with three stanzas of our hymn. Our reading for today takes place right after Peter and John uh, heal a lame man who was not able to walk for the entirety of his life. And then a crowd of mostly Jewish people come and marvel at the miracle, and Peter uses it as a great teaching opportunity. While the man was held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us, at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name 
and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Fellow Israelites, now fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who had been appointed for you, even Jesus. Peter and John just performed a pretty incredible feat. They healed that lame man from birth. And, uh, but Peter doesn't use it to bask in any of his own glory. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he uses it as a great teaching moment. And there are a few lessons that I think we can pull out and apply for ourselves. First off, this miracle is a sign. Peter says, this man is standing before you completely healed. And it's because of the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This isn't a magician's trick or some demonic evidence of power. This is the holy power of God on display. With what Peter did, think about how much maturity it took to do what Peter did. What would you and I be tempted to do in his sandals? We might say, look at the power we have in Jesus' name. The same Jesus that you rejected and crucified. Now you shall pay for your mistakes. Our version of justice might want to see that these people pay and suffer for what they did to Jesus. But is that the example that Jesus set for his disciples? Is that the example that he set for us? Let's be clear. He doesn't let them off the hook. He gives them a pretty good talking to. Many of the faces of the people in that crowd that day probably went white or flush red with shame and remorse. The law was certainly implemented here and implemented well. Peter's words cut deep. This is really what they needed to hear at that moment in time. But look at how well the Spirit moves Peter to shift from the law into the gospel. Peter acknowledged that they acted in ignorance, but that doesn't excuse it. He calls for repentance, a turning away from that mistake and towards God. Repentance isn't just about the past, it's also about the future. Peter says, repent then and turn to God so your sins may be wiped clean. This forgiveness opens the door to restoration. He mentions times of refreshing coming from the presence of the Lord. That's a promise of renewal, a chance to be closer to God. I want you to take a moment and consider how we utilize the law and the gospel with others in our lives. Can you think of a time that you leaned hard into pushing the law on someone? Perhaps you started with the best of intentions, but your emotions got the better of you. What started was it of an act of bringing to light the sin of a brother or sister in Christ devolves into shaming with the intent to bring pain to someone. On the other side of that coin, consider a time when you use the gospel as an excuse to avoid conflict. For those of us who are a little more on the introverted side, does your stomach turn with the idea of talking to someone about a sin that you witnessed or heard about? It's not an easy conversation to have if you are not practiced. Instead of bringing the sin to light, we let it slide, comforting ourselves with the assumption that will probably repent, and their sins are already forgiven, so I'm not going to worry about it. When we find ourselves in those situations, let us remember how Peter addressed the crowd. A great balance of firm law, but a well-timed gospel reprieve to lift their repentant hearts. Let's end with the sending that Peter gives to the crowd. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. It's that time of year where things start to get a little heavy. The weight of projects, the weight of responsibilities, of relationships, of the mistakes of the past school year, or perhaps the uncertainties of what lies in your future, they pile up. They compress us. 
these distractions turn us in on ourselves, we start to either blame ourselves or find scapegoats in our lives to pass the blame. It may start a little bit at a time. It's really insidious, but it builds and it builds and it builds. This is a life lived apart from God. This is a life of putting trust in ourselves and in our own abilities. This is a life living off the fleeting glories of our own accomplishments. And we need to stop that. Stop living for yourself or anything else of this world and return to your heavenly Father. Our God has never given up on you, never rejected you, and will always love you. Acknowledge the burden we've placed on ourselves by turning away from God and recognize that true peace and strength come from relying on him. When we repent and trust in the forgiveness won for us, we are released from the cycle of self-blame and the need for external validation. If you are feeling that weight, take some time today to meditate on Jesus, carrying your worries for you. Repent for pushing God out of your life and embrace his love and care for you. Peter's message wasn't just for a confused crowd of Jews in Jerusalem. It is for us. We are constantly seeking things other than God to give our lives purpose. We reject Jesus like, just like those people rejected Jesus. This week, let's commit to spending intentional time with God, whether it's through prayer, reading scripture, or simply being present and reflecting. You might be surprised by the refreshment and purpose God offers us. Amen. We continue with prayer. Please pull your hands and bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, our sin and shame weighs on our hearts. As sin and shame weighs on our hearts, remind us of the price your son paid to win us back and the love that it took for you to enact that plan for us. We are yours. Our lives are in your hands. Go now. And turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord.